welcome back. Today we're talking about the series finale of Insecure and I apologize for my absence last week. I had no expectations going into this final episode and they quite literally fast forwarded to the part where everything is okay. And I think that's my issue with this season that everything is so literal, right? And I really appreciate the show. It started off as awkward black girl, like that was the prototype for the show. And to go from YouTube, right, to HBO is an extraordinary achievement. Like when you think about where the show started to where it's ended, especially for viewers that have been following this show season after season after season, you know what this show means. And I think they were trying to mirror this achievement in the final season. You know, it was very sentimental. It was a lot of like, everything's gonna be okay. And you know, I get it. Like I get what they were trying to do. But I think they were so focused on the messaging and really kind of putting, like, there was kind of tunnel vision there that the story ended up, you know, like, not flowing as well as it could have. And so I'll briefly recap the last episode since I was not here. So in the last episode, Nathan finally realizes that Issa is just not that into him. And Lawrence declares his love for her he fights for her. He says, you know, are you happy? And as we know, she's not happy. You know, we can tell it's been written all over her face. And watching him declare his love, it's really interesting. There, there's what you think you want and what you actually want. And I remember at the end of season one, she had this fantasy of Lawrence kind of proposing and, you know, their life being beautiful and, you know, everything working out. And I think it's interesting that they played on that fantasy in this last episode, right? In terms of what happiness can look like or what it should look like. So that was, you know, I've been re-watching past seasons and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit sad that this is it. So the episode starts off with Nathan driving Issa home. And this was really sad, right? They have this conversation and he's really destroyed, right? He's crying his heart is broken and he discusses like ignoring this feeling that he's had all along like he sensed that there was something off this whole time and Issa's reaction was was not right y'all like she just she was like okay bye like she literally just got out of the car she pieced him out and he's like literally devastated and the thing about Nathan's character is I'm trying to understand why they cast him because the only person I could see Issa leaving Lawrence for was Daniel. Why is that? Because they had chemistry. And as an audience, we can feel when somebody has chemistry and maybe Nathan's purpose was, you know, I think one-sided love is always a tragedy because here you have Nathan who I think was in love with her, but she just could not reciprocate that love. And although he knew that, watching her confirm it was heartbreaking. You know, and, and that could be the purpose of his character to kind of demonstrate this one side of love because in reality, it was never believable. You know, that tension of is she going to go with Lawrence or is she going to go with Nathan? It, even if you don't like Lawrence, I mean, she could not stay with Nathan. And I think although you respect somebody and although you can appreciate them, if your heart's not in it, you can't, you can't, it, it's just a no, right? So Isa goes home. She's depressed and, you know, she's back to square one and she has this mirror conversation and these mirror conversations are getting aggressive, right? Like the self-doubt and the self-criticizing and it's basically telling her, you were worried about all these decisions and in the end, you just made the wrong one anyway. So there's really nothing to worry about at all. And I think sometimes we can be our own worst enemies, right? And I think that was the purpose of these mirror conversations where you have this logical part of your brain that's trying to rationalize everything but usually you just end up making yourself feel worse and this mirror conversation is how they kick off the episode right because they discuss she basically says i wish i could fast forward to the part where everything is okay and then they quite literally fast forward to this entire episode using birthdays and i thought the birthday sequences were interesting i thought it was a great storytelling mechanism like it was a very clever way of speeding things along i also like that they synced up the music like the soundtrack this episode honestly made up for it like at least it was about like you know this show has always been aesthetically pleasing and very fantastic with its musical choices 
So this whole thing about birthdays is, is really clever. The other thing I appreciated about the birthday storyline is Issa has always been, I'm not going to say the weak link in the group, but a lot of your success, I feel, depends on the people you surround yourself around, right? So if you want to be in a healthy relationship, you should be around people in healthy relationships or people who are single and happy. If you want to be around successful people, if you want to be successful, you should be around successful people, right? So Molly might not have it all together, but she's always been successful in her career. So Issa's friend group is interesting because it really speaks to the fact that you really have to be surrounded by the types of people with the characteristics or traits that you want. And the people you celebrate to say a lot about you. So this idea of kind of celebrating each person's birthday, I think is like an appreciation to like what each person, you know, the characteristics that each person possesses that, you know, like either they, they balance themselves out, right? Like, and I think that's why Issa has, has, has always had in part the sense of urgency to be like, okay, like I need to, I need to keep it moving. And again, your motivation or demotivation, a lot of it can be influenced by the people that you're around. So we'll start off with Molly's birthday. And Molly's birthday is interesting because you guys let me know if I'm wrong, but it seems like she made partner. Her and Torian are doing very well. You know, apparently she's meeting the parents soon and they've created this very cute work life dynamic. So things are working out really well. Kelly has a new boyfriend. And I just want to say this, Kelly's man had more chemistry than Nathan and Issa this whole season. Like, like in that brief moment that we've seen Kelly's new man, like they, they, they were vibing quite well. Like when they were trying to explain how they met and they were laughing, I was like, you guys are so nasty and gross. Like what the, the, again, it just works. And Tiffany, you know, she flew in from Denver and she's not happy in Denver. Like she looked like she couldn't wait to get back to LA, but Molly's birthday, this is like one of the last few times that she's going to be there with her mom. So we wrap up Molly's birthday and then we go to Issa's birthday. And Issa is, you know, she's made it, she's making it, she's in the making, right? She's really kind of on her grind. And Molly, Molly and I guess her assistant throw her a surprise birthday party. So she shows up and she's worried about, you know, a possible leakage or some type of issue and they throw her a surprise party. And the surprise party was very cute because instead of presents, they had donations, right? And it kind of shows you like how far she's come. And you know, a few things to note here. First, Kelly and Molly apparently are kind of on a, on a business sort of venture. So Molly's trying to convince Kelly to, you know, jump ship. She said she talked to the partners and they're interested in opening up an estate division and that she should come with. And Kelly's interesting because she's always been together, but not together. Like, I don't know how to describe her. Like she cares about herself, like she's two extremes. You know, she's very professional and then she just has this, she can kind of sway in like opposite directions. And from Issa's birthday party, this is kind of when we start seeing her date again. So ever since she left Nathan, she, she's been dating. Like every birthday, she seems to have a new boyfriend. So she's trying, you know, she's trying to get into the game, but nothing's really feeling quite right, right? And this is the the birthday that Nathan comes to visit her. And I thought it was nice that he came to visit. He definitely didn't have to. And he kind of offers a donation from the barber shop. And that was nice of him. And they have this conversation about closure and regret. So Nathan has never felt at home in Los Angeles. And he, he's, he slowly warmed up to the place. And, you know, he, he wanted to apologize for how everything went down. You know, like there was a disconnect and it was quite messy, right? And this issue of regret, you know, like she, she kind of says, well, I hope like you meet ev everyone comes into your life for a reason or a season. And I do believe that like every, every person that you meet is there for a reason, especially with relationships. And it, this was really telling because I think in kind of being together, they kind of realized like the heart wants what the heart wants, you know? And you, it's really important to make sure that if you love someone that it's reciprocated, right? You never want to, for Nathan, you never want to be in that one-sided dynamic. And for Issa, you never want to feel like you're, you're one foot in, one foot out, right? I think that's kind of the worst where you're not giving 100% even though you could. So this whole thing about, you know, meeting people for the right reason, I think each relationship you have should make you appreciate the next relationship, right? It should make you appreciate, like if you fall out with a friend, 
it should make you appreciate your new friends even more, right? Like sometimes it's hard to, you know, undo the damage, especially with Nathan and Issa, right? Like Issa, you know, she, she really kind of did him wrong, right? She knew she wasn't 100% into it in my opinion, but you know, as long as you don't repeat your mistakes, and as long as you go into the next relationships like open-minded and you know fully aware of what you could have done better i think that's all you can do and with that Nitha, nathan and isa part ways right like they're done that's it and they are no more and then we get to and then we skip over to tiffany's birthday party and this time they're in denver and tiffany hates denver she doesn't feel comfortable at all in this place she's there to support her husband she she doesn't know what she's doing Right, she, she's kind of in limbo a bit. She doesn't really want to be this housewife. And Derek kind of makes a comment and he says, well, you guys are the best, men suck, no one's come to visit me at all. And then you see a picture of Lawrence, you know, and, and his baby. So I guess Lawrence has been around to Denver like he's come to visit Derek. And Issa sees this picture of them together. And Molly kind of asks like, hey girl, what would you have said if Nathan didn't interrupt in terms of are you happy? And of course we know the answer, like, no, I'm not happy. But Issa was like trying to justify herself. But I think it's interesting that Molly pretty much gave her the, like, Molly and Issa have come a long way. You know, like they've kind of, they've said things to each other that, again, a lot of people could not come back from, right? Like the things they've kind of gone back and forth. And Molly, I think, surprised Issa when she said, listen, if you want him, you need to just go after it. Like essentially giving her the green light. And Issa was shocked because she just assumed that Molly would say something like, you know, like you need to do better, you need to move on, you need to do this and that. And sometimes we assume people's thoughts, but Molly's like, no, that's not at all what I think. And so she's, you know, the people change their minds. I feel in part the reason Issa doesn't want to bother with Lawrence or has been resisting is because she doesn't want to justify her relationship to the people around her. You know, like she doesn't want to, you know, it's like you're fighting to maintain the relationship and then you're fighting to prove to everybody else that you should be in this relationship. But when Molly said, you know what, it's all good, I think that kind of like, like kind of triggered something in her mind. And also the fact that Molly's mother died. So she gets a call and her mom died. And I think this also gave Issa that sense of urgency to be like, okay, you know what? I can't care what other people think, including the audience. And I'm gonna go after what I want. And what I want is Lawrence. So we get to Lawrence's birthday and his mom is on the phone with him. And I think it's cute that Lawrence and Condola have pretty much agreed to co-parenting. Like there's nothing romantic between them. And I think this is tough for Lawrence to justify because his parents were like, we love Condola. You know, she's a great mom. She's taking care of her kids. Like it's hard to justify why you're not with the mother of your child. You know what I mean? Like, but there's no love there. And I think it's important to make that point. You know, this, this idea that you have to stay together for the children is, is not necessarily true to have a healthy co-parenting relationship, right? It's it's better, like, you can't really fake love in a relationship, especially if it's one-sided. So Lawrence is just like, I think he's still in that weird state where he's trying to justify himself a bit. So he seems to also be dating. And Lawrence, for better or for worse, you could say, you know, re-watching season one, he was, you know, like, we forget that he was, like, she cheated on him. Like, Issa did cheat on him, and that's not something that he, he recovered from. And ever since Issa left him, he has been in limbo and same with Issa. Like they haven't been able to find a relationship that they're fully comfortable in, that, they're, that they, they can 100% commit to. So Lawrence has been dating casually. Nothing seems very serious. The only one that seemed serious was with Condola, but that turned into a nightmare. And so he's talking to his parents and then Issa calls and he picks up and Issa just, sh I was shocked. She was like, hey, happy birthday. Can I take you out for dinner? And, you know, he, of course, wanted to say yes, right? He was like, e but, you know, like his, his girl rang the doorbell, so he obviously couldn't say yes. So, you know, like she, she was really, she really was, she just went after it. And uh, he, he didn't take her up on the offer that time, but he definitely would moving forward. But again, from this birthday encounter, you can kind of tell that she, she's not, like her mind is still on Lawrence, right? Like she has this idea that she didn't give it 100%. And what would have happened if she was all in it? Would they have worked out or would they not have worked out? And that sort of what if I think has been haunting her. 
And so she called him. Okay, so we skip over to Kelly's birthday, and Kelly, Kelly's pregnant somehow, and she's always been stable, but not stable. Like, again, she's just one of those characters that comes out of left field. And her whole thing is that ever since people thought she was dead, she's, you know, changed her mind about what she wants in life. And, you know, watching her and Tiffany bond, like, Issa's face totally changed, right? Like, Kelly, as per usual, revealed way too much about herself in terms of, like, how this man was able to influence her to not only want a baby, but also engage in activities she never thought she would. But all this to say, Issa's face, she looked very jealous, you know, like her friends are pregnant or they're, you know, getting engaged or married and she's still kind of in the same place. So I think it sucks when you see your friends like progressing towards what looks like adulthood and you're just static, you know, you're still dating casually, right? She brings this guy to Kelly's birthday party. And I think when Derek asked, like, how did you guys meet? Like, it didn't even make any sense. She was just like, yeah, we met on an app and then this, like, it didn't make sense. It's like, he, she just brought somebody to bring somebody, but it was clear that this man was here for a good time and not a long time. And I think it sucks, like the older you get, it's hard to justify like casual relationships, especially when all your friends are married and like getting serious and you're like one of the few people left, you know, you're just like, you, you know, you feel it more. So they leave the party and she takes this man home with her. And then they have another mirror conversation. And in this mirror conversation, you know, her mirror self, again, this, this mirror self is very aggressive and it wasn't like this before. And this mirror, mirror is, Issa is basically telling her like, you are a mess, you know, like you need to get over it. You know, like it will never work out. And again, I think there's a logical part of your brain, like this battle between the heart and the mind. And sometimes like logically, you know what you should be doing, you know, like the right decision, but then does it feel right, you know? And this is the first time she like talks back to her mirror self, like, why not? Why can't I pick up the phone? Why can't it work out? Like, what's the reason? Like, like this, this thing, because I think, you know, there's this idea that Issa has about what her life should look like and in terms of what I deserve, you know, like I deserve better than Lawrence or I, I, I deserve, you know, this and like, you know, you date and you do your best. And so she talks back to her mirror self and from there she's, she's done. She's gonna go pursue what she wants. You know, this, this episode is divided into birthdays and each birthday is like an escalation, right? I, again, the birthday storyline is super clever. So we get to Molly's second birthday, right? So now we're, we're like really jumping through time because we keep circling back to birthdays. And I was like, damn, how much time has gone by? So Molly's second birthday is a bit sobering because her mother is not with her. And I love this sort of connection between Molly and Issa. Like, I love you, sis. Like, I miss you. I miss you, girl. And again, I'm disappointed in the season in that we didn't really explore how they got over their rough patch. But whatever, they did, and now they're here. And Molly kind of says, like, when did things get so real? You know, like, we can make plans, but at the end of the day, things happen. You know, as much as we try to control things or as much as we try to visualize how we want our life to look like or who we want in our life, things happen, you know? And this is significant, especially for Molly because she gets married and her mother's not there, right? Like we all have an image about what we think things should look like. And we just assume certain people will be there. But again, sometimes, we plan, but you know, God plans. And shortly after that conversation, Issa hangs up the phone and Lawrence comes to visit. So Issa is again, doing very well. She's opening a new office. She's sort of furnishing it. She's got employees. She went from, we got y'all to, you know, I got mine as they say, like, and Lawrence comes in and this, again, you can dislike this Lawrence and Issa storyline. But I think they're, they're an interesting sort of commentary on conditional versus like unconditional love because, you know, I think they're polar opposite, right? Like Lawrence expects unconditional love, right? Like he felt that Issa should have supported him no matter what through whatever. But the only people who owe you that kind of love are your family and your parents, right? Whereas Issa's love was conditional, right? Like the longer she supported Lawrence, the more frustrated she got because she was like, like are, you, like, are you gonna live up to your full potential? Like, what are you gonna do? And I think now that Issa's in a more stable place, she doesn't need Lawrence to make her happy anymore. 
And now that Lawrence is also in a better place, he doesn't really need that to use Isa as like this emotional crutch, you know. So they're an interesting commentary on, on that side. But she's showing him around the office, you know, very short tour. And they have this wonderful conversation about the road to get here, right? It was a very long, arduous road. You know, Issa kept going. And I, I think it's important to always keep going, you know. And this birthday storyline kind of helps with that because, you know, people, you know, sometimes miscalculate. You know, like you have to take risks and, you know, the cost of staying in the same place forever, you know, could be far worse than just shooting your shot and trying your best. And she kind of has a conversation like she didn't know if she could do this, right? She was kind of afraid that she would fail, that she would be laughed at, that this was like dumb, you know, like what was she pursuing, putting all her heart into this and for what? And she's like, you know what, the only person, you know, standing in the way was me. The only one doubting me is me. And I think this is true, right? Because nothing is ever really as bad as it seems if you're doing your best. You know, if you put 100% into something, then like it's natural to, you know, imagine a worst case scenario. Like I always imagine my students wanting to like coup d'etat, you know, coup d'etat me. Like basically like I'm not, we're not going to do this. And I don't know why I have that fear that you know, there's just like sometimes the discrepancy between what we think people think and what they actually think could be huge. Like the other day, my students kind of like it's the end of our semester. A group of them came up to me after class. They're like, Miss, we have a surprise for you. And I was like, surprise. And they just wanted to give me flowers and thank me for like the semester. And I was like, "Woo!" you know, like, thank you guys. And it's really funny because sometimes in our minds, we can think that people hate us or they have something against us when really they're they're just thinking like I hope that girl's okay or I hope that person is okay you know like I mean sometimes we can just really talk ourselves into nonsense and you know this whole thing about doubt and taking risks like you really are your own worst enemy like you have to manage your expectations and just kind of accept the good with the bad without it being a reflection on you I mean all this to say you have to believe it will work out in order for it to work out and that's the question here, right? Like, does she believe that her and Lawrence can work out? And her response was kind of brilliant, right? She's willing to give it a shot. And I think at the end of the day, like, if you go into something 100% and it doesn't work out, that's fine. But if you have this one foot, one foot out, and sometimes you don't realize that until the person leaves or you lose an opportunity, like, did I really do the best I can to, to maintain this? Like, did I really do all that I could? And that, that comes for both people. And so they're giving it a shot. You know, in this scene, either you hated it or you loved it, you were cringing or you were crying, you know, and again, the heart wants what the heart wants. So who are we to judge? So we skip over to one year later. So we're no longer doing birthdays. We are now one year later into Molly's wedding. And Molly's wedding is really interesting. And I'll tell you why I think it's interesting because she found somebody, like the person they cast was perfect because it feels natural, you know, and I think that speaks volumes because the message I got watching Molly kind of in this whirlwind romance is, you know, you go through all this trash to get to treasure, right? And, and when you do meet the person that you're supposed to be with, you forget all the rest, right? Like you forget the bad, you forget all the rest. It's almost like there was nothing before them. And that's what I sense between Molly and Torian, like all this was worth it to meet this person and once you meet the right person it makes like it makes it all worth it you know and I, I think there's a commentary there sometimes we get so hung up on like the people we've dated especially molly in the beginning right she was still trying to get over this andrew she was still like she's always been someone like it took her a while to get over people and now it's like those people don't exist anymore right and we saw that in the last episode with Dro. like she was like oh hey like i totally forgot that you existed you know and again i think it speaks to like how in the end we just think, okay, well, what do we do if this relationship doesn't work out or this? But like in the end, once you meet the person, like nothing else will matter. Like you, you literally wonder like, who even are these other people? So she's married, she's happy. Lawrence is there, they're together. And they have this cute conversation about like, we got y'all, you know, like Molly and Issa's friendship. And again, like, you know, I appreciate their friendship I, I wish we could have seen it reconcile, but whatever. Like they, they have this cute conversation about like, 
you know, whatever happens, as long as you're there, you know, I know everything's going to be okay. And they have like a once in a lifetime relationship, right? Like that kind of, this is a great love, right? To kind of have gone through something with someone for that long. Everybody seems to be doing well. I think Tiffany was pregnant again. Like she was, she looked, Kelly, Kelly was Kelly. And so Molly's wedding was really nice. It was really nice. And of course, the last birthday we end with is Issa's birthday. And y'all, each birthday is one year, so do the math. That's a lot of years that just went by. So Issa's birthday comes around, and she is... Like, I really like this last scene for a lot of reasons. So we see Issa, her office is set up. She, you know, she has employees, she looks good. She gets in her Lexus, and she drives by all these places. And first is her apartment. And, you know, there was a time, I think there's a certain point where you feel stuck, right? Like, you can kind of plateau where you feel like, oh my God, am I going to be stuck in this apartment forever? Is this as far? Is this as good as my life gets? So she's kind of driving by all these places thinking, what was I ever worried about? You know, like, I, like, I can't believe, like, I went from there to here. And she's driving by and she sees, like, this Best Buy employee, and I'm sure for Lawrence it's shocking. He went from Best Buy to where he is now. And again, I think it speaks to the importance of movement. Like, as long as you're not paralyzed, and as long as you keep moving, things will work out. You know, like, you do what you have to do, but you gotta do something. And I think the best part is when she drove by at We Got Y'all, you know, and there's still, like, the same employees. And I felt that because, you know, sometimes I look back on the jobs I've had, and knowing that, I feel like I escaped. You know, like, that's why it's important to keep going because, again, people, you know, they, they calculate risks, but they, they don't calculate, like, the cost of staying in the same place for a long time, right? Like, that's really what you got to think about. And she's driving by, we got y'all, and she's just like, oh, you know, in her Lexus, like, what, what even was that? And so, again, like, this movement, right? Like, you, you got to keep moving. If you're unhappy with something, you got to keep moving. And it's better to fail and try than to not try at all. She's driving all the way to her house with Lawrence, and I guess they bought a house because last episode he was thinking of buying a house, and he's trying to be very selective, and this is the house that he bought. And they're, this, is, this was interesting because he's with his son, and they seem at peace, right? It's Issa's birthday, they're making her a cake, and they seem to be very, very happy, right? And I think, you know, again, it speaks to, like, what we think our life should look like. You know, I don't think... When you think about that first fantasy in season one where she imagined Lawrence and them having a child and, you know, like, it's, it's, of course you want to have, it's okay to have expectations, you know, like everybody has an image of what their life should look like, but you also have to accept that things may not be exactly that. And I think they found a healthy balance, you know, like, okay, just because things don't look like what I thought they would look like, that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially nowadays where people are so stigmatized for you know, being single parents or, you know, why aren't you, you know, stay, this idea where you have to stay in the marriage for the kids or you gotta, you know, you gotta like push through things. No, like it's, it's not necessary. Like you can co-parent, be, date, be perfectly happy, you know, and there, there doesn't have to be any like shame or sadness around it. So they found an equilibrium. And again, it's a very clever, way of ending the series and to get you re to rethink like, okay, well, just because things don't look like how you thought they would, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And Issa calls Molly and she's in Greece and she's having a great time in Greece. And uh, yeah, you know, like Lawrence and Issa are not married and they kind of have a final conversation about you know, like broken, I can't say it on air, but, and the episode ends. So overall, you know, it's, I thought this was a great show. I think where there's room for improvement, again, is exploring, you know, friendships. Because at the end of the last season, Issa and Molly really went through a rough patch. And I really wish they revolved this season around their relationship, their friendship, instead of their relationships. That would have made for a stronger ending. And, you know, this season was very sentimental. I think they were very concerned. They were more like... They, they, they wanted to really show how far they've come. And, you know, the story kind of took a back burner. Like, it, it wasn't as well developed or weaved in as the past seasons. And again, the show has always been good at being very, very relatable, right? Like, you kind of leave the episodes and you think, 
oh yeah that happened to me last week like it's so relatable this season wasn't as relatable you know and it could be this mechanism of fast forwarding that they kind of used a bit but uh, overall i really appreciated the show i don't think there's ever been a show where you as, for me personally as relatable as this and just as vulnerable as this like there's a level of vulnerability to the show that it's very it's very real you know it's very real like you just feel like you're watching people live their lives and it makes you feel less alone because you're like wait a minute i'm not the only person who who has done that or has had that happen to me for better or worse and so you find yourself like laughing at things that you never thought you would so overall it was a brilliant show the last season i think that's true for every last season of every show where you're just like you know every show should just end at the season they they think you know like the season before the last so there's five seasons they should end at season four but again you know it's the people who have followed it for a long time like you know you know like it's given us moments it's given us like laughs and this whole thing with lawrence you know i think it just speaks to the fact that you have to make decisions for yourself and you you have to do things your own way right like you can't be concerned with what it looks like or trying to justify your behaviors to anyone else so with that being said you guys let me know what you think thank you for sticking by me and until next time mm -hmm.